Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to give you a brief refresher on how to make a Park Lake assessment using Google Forms. So you see them in Drive. I'm going to go to New, More, Google Forms. Um, if you remember, we talked about form settings. If we click uh, Show Progress bar at the bottom of the page, Allow One uh, Response and Shuffle Question Order, those are your basic Park Lake settings for the top. Um, don't forget to name your form, your, your Park Lake assessment. Um, remember that we can change the theme, which will allow me to make my form look pretty. And don't forget, I don't have to save anything because this is cloud-based, so I can go right back to edit questions. If I ever want to see what it looks like for students, I just click View Live Form, and this is what, this is what it's going to look like when students take it. So that's Edit Questions, Change Theme, View Live Form. Um, when we talk about what type of questions we want to be asking, um, text, paragraph text, multiple choice, checkbox, choose from list, um, those are all park-like questions that they might see. Don't forget if you select multiple choice, uh, one thing that you could do in advanced settings is click shuffle option order, which will change the order which, which uh, the answers appear. Um, so not only are we shuffling the questions, but we're also shuffling the answers, and that's going to be very park-like because when you look at somebody else's test, um, no two tests are the same when you take park. Um, so if I want to add, don't forget check boxes are important too because a lot of times in park, um, it's going to ask you uh, which, you know, something like uh, which makes for the best evidence or select all that count. Um, so a lot of times kids are going to have to deal with the fact of, um, you know, right and wrong answers. So make sure you use your options, uh, your uh, checkbox options. Make sure you do the same thing with your pull down menu. Don't forget if you want to change the question order, all I have to do is drag and drop, drag and drop. Um, if I want to edit a question, I could just click on it. Um, if I want to copy a question, right, I just click that copy button right here, and you'll see now I have two copies. Um, and if I want to delete, I just go to the trash can. Um, when we come down to add an item, layouts that we can use that is going to make our test park like is going to be section header. So this might be part one. Um, and again, I can move this up here park test. There we go, part one, and so this is what it'll look like for the kids. So you can see part one, uh, park uses headers, so it's important that you kind of label each header. Um, and so not only does park use headers, it also uses page breaks. That's how you get things to go on to different pages. Part two, so you can see now page break is represented by this blank space here, and if I look at it, you will see now I have a continue button with 50% complete. So it's not a bad idea to put one question on each um, page break, um, but page breaks and section headers are really important to making it park-like. Um, we want to make sure that we add images. So um, you know, if I was just to upload an image, see if I have anything. Probably should have planned that. So let's upload this Fairhaven graphic. So you can see, um, I can title the image, what was called Fairhaven for fun. Um, it's important to add hover text. Um, if I add hover text when it's done and students go and check it out, um, just like on Park, when they hover over, you'll see they get that information. So it's important that you add hover text. Um, you'll get those on a lot of, especially math-based picture problems. There'll be hover text that's important to solving the, um, the question. Um, so you can add images, and the same way that I can add images, I can also add videos. Um, whether you add them by YouTube or URL, uh, they have to come off YouTube though. Um, toward the bottom on the confirmation page, things that we want to make sure are not clicked. Uh, we do not want to click show link to submit another response. That will most likely be grayed out because we are only allowing one person to uh, one response per person. So that should automatically be grayed out. But if it's not, make sure that you unclick that. Otherwise, everybody's going to be able to submit more than one. Um, publish and show a public link to form and results. We do not want to click that because that will allow kids to see everybody else's answers. Um, and we do not want to allow responders to edit responses after submitting. Once they're done, they're done. Um, so that's a little bit. Something else that you could do. Um, let's say I'm taking this picture here and I'm going to add under it a paragraph text because I want them to write an essay. Um, 
something you can do if you go to advanced settings data validation you click that on text minimum characters let's set the minimum characters at like 10 or something um, a student will not be allowed to submit that answer unless that's there's so many characters met um, I use this to make sure kids don't accidentally hit submit because that's one of the worst things that can happen because we're only allowing one response per person if they accidentally hit submit and they submit their park lake assessment to you right that creates a big headache um, so something you could do when you go to paragraph um, paragraph text questions is add uh, a minimum character count or maximum character count stuff like that so that's in advanced settings um, and since I added this question when students look at it um, here on the second page you'll see there's the picture and then there they are writing the essay about the picture or something like that depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, some other stuff to be aware of. Required questions. If I click this box, they will not be allowed to move on until they answer that question. Um, so it's kind of up to your discretion if you want to make every question a required question. Um, I would definitely suggest when you, um, when you do your information, so you do like last name, right? Um, I would make that a required question so that way when students, you know, get to, uh, no, what happened? oh, there, I should have moved it. Um, that way when students have to enter their information, they could just go to last name, um, type it in, and then you could do first name or period or class or teacher. Any information that you want to have, um, you want to make sure that you have it as a required question. But don't forget, um, students will not be allowed to go on because this is a required question they have not answered. So that's how you do that. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a lot of you guys playing around and getting used to um, making park like assessments. But don't forget um, to vary your questions text, paragraph text, multiple choice, check boxes, choose from a list. Those will all be on park. Um, to make it look park like, don't forget in the layout, we want to use section header, page break, we want to have images, and we want to have videos. Um, so, again, this is just a brief refresher um, in case you wanted to check it out again and you wanted to you know, uh, recall some Park Lake assessment stuff. So a couple more things before we get out of here. Um, if you find that your questions are not being updated on live form quickly, uh, sometimes Google needs a second to catch up. Don't be afraid to either wait a few seconds or just reload or refresh the page um, and your questions will start to show up in the correct order on the live form. If you move too many things too quickly, it takes a second for it to catch up with itself. Um, because everything is automatically saved as you do it by reloading, refreshing, uh, refreshing or just closing out the window, you're not going to lose anything. Um, don't forget math teachers, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to add-ons, we're going to go to get add-ons, and the add-on I talked to you guys about to add those expressions, those math expressions into your form um, is going to be GMath. So it's add-ons, get add-ons, um, and then you will see GMath. Mine already says, yours is going to say, uh, going to say load or something like that. Mine says manage because I already have it, but to make it pop up you go to add-ons, uh, GMath for forms, let's create math expressions and you'll see over here it pops up in this window and it'll allow me to insert um, all of the math, whatever you call them, um, right into your Google Forms. Um, and the last thing is when it is time to share out your form, don't forget you want to go to send form. Um, something you could do to make your life easier, if you want to use a QR code scanner, you could do that. Or you'll notice it gives you the option. It says short URL. Um, if you look, that's such a long URL right here to share out with the kids. Um, if you click short URL, it gives you a short one, and you can write that on the board or write that on a piece of paper. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that we've gone over that you can share this out. Um, so this test, Park Lake Assessment's ready to go. Hopefully you are too.